Good morning. Welcome to this, our worship service coming to you from Trinity Lutheran Church here in Frankfurt, Germany. I'm Pastor Gary Schuske. It's our privilege to share this service with you in greater Rhine-Main, Germany, but also with all of you all around the world who are joining us. What a blessing we can be together in this way. If you are joining us for the first time today, I'd like to give you just a thought or two about ways to worship from your home. And if you'd like to pause the video to set some things up, naturally you can do that. First of all, I want to encourage you please to set up a worship area there in your home, maybe draw some chairs up by the television. And I've been saying through this time, the great thing when you're home, you can always have the back row of church if you want. Uh, please minimize distractions, turn off your cell phones and so forth. I would encourage you to have your Bible nearby where you could look up some passages or maybe follow along or, or write a note or two. Why not find a candle or two and light them, reminding us of the light of the world as we do here in church, and also maybe a plant, again, reminding us of the life that is ours in Jesus Christ. Then finally, we would encourage you to do all the things at home that we're doing here in church, to sit and to stand and to sing and to pray and be part of the service in that way. If you'd like to pause the video now, you're welcome to do so. Otherwise, let's just take a moment uh, to pause and kind of move from instructions, preparing our hearts for worship prior to our prelude. Our service now begins with our prelude. now continues with confession and absolution please stand in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen if we say we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us but if we confess our sins God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, that his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of the Word, in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the 
peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. gave your son into the hands of sinful men who killed him. Forgive us when we reject your unfailing love and grant us the fullness of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated now for the reading of our Old Testament. This is the Old Testament reading. Chapter 5 from Isaiah, starting from first words. Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. He looked for it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now, O inhabitant of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I looked for it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I, tell, I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall 
and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste, it shall not be purged or hoard, and briars and thorns shall grow up. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the man of Judah are his pleasant planting. And he looked for justice, but behold, bloodshed for righteousness, but behold, an outcry. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. We speak our psalm responsibly. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. You brought wine out of Egypt. You drove out the nations and planted it. You cleared the ground for it. It took deep root and filled the land. The mountains were covered with its shade, the mighty cedars with its branches. It sent out its branches to the sea and its shoots to the river. Why then have you broken down its walls so that all who pass along the way pluck its fruit? The boar from the forest ravages it, and all that move in the field feed on it. Turn again, O God of hosts. Look down from heaven and see. Have regard for this vine. The stock that your right hand planted, for the son whom you made strong for yourself. They have burned it with Let your hand be on the man of your right hand, the son of man whom you have made strong for yourself. Then we shall not turn back from you. Give us life, and we will call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. We now have our epistle reading. The epistle reading is taken from Philippians chapter 3, starting at the fourth verse. If anyone else thinks he has reason for confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law of Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection, and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own, because Jesus Christ has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the price of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please stand. Hallelujah, Lord, to whom shall we go? Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Hear another parable. There was a master of a house who planted a vineyard and put a fence around it and dug a wine press in it and built a tower and leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the season for fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to get his fruit. And the tenants took his servants, beat one, killed another, and stoned another. 
Again, he sent other servants more than the first, and they did the same to them. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and have his inheritance. And they took him, and they threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. When, therefore, the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and let out the vineyard to other tenants who will give him fruit in their season. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures, The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people producing its fruits. And the one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and when it falls on anyone, it will crush him. When the chief priests and Pharisees heard his parables, they perceived he was speaking about them. And although they were seeking to arrest him, they feared the crowds because they held him to be a prophet. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. We now sing our hymn, Christ the Word of God Incarnate. Peace to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for this morning is the Gospel reading from Matthew, the 21st chapter, read a few moments ago. It was dad and daughter evening. This father picked up his small daughter and put her on his shoulders, carried her out to the car. 
very gently placed her in her seat and buckled her in very snugly and drove to McDonald's because that was their tradition. When they arrived at the restaurant, he did the opposite, unbuckled her, took her gently from the car, placed her on his shoulders, carried her into the restaurant. Why, he even let her sit on his shoulders while he ordered for her her favorite, a happy meal. And of course, he paid for the happy meal also. This father was so talented, he even managed to carry his daughter and their food to the table. Getting them both settled gently, they said a short prayer, and here's what happened next. Think about this for a moment. This father did everything. He did all the preparing. He carried her. He drove her. He even paid for her meal. But now look what happens next. When this father has the nerve to reach across the table to take just one of her french fries, what does she do? She slaps his hand and she says, mine. My friends, I think sometimes that's what our relationship looks like with God. He gives us everything, but still inside of us there's a voice that wants to say, mine. Jesus tells us a parable about just such the truth today here in Matthew chapter 21. Remember, of course, now Jesus is in Jerusalem. The time is urgent. He knows the cross is coming and coming soon. And so the words he speaks at this time are even more powerful. My friends, the story of the daughter and the father is a bit amusing. But the parable that Jesus tells us today is not amusing at all. It is strange and even horrible in its own way. So listen to Jesus' story. A master went out to build a vineyard. Here in our part of Germany, we're not very far from wine and vineyards, so maybe we have a better idea of just how much work we're talking about. Not just farming, but truly an art form to build a vineyard that probably means climbing up and down a hillside and pruning the vines and loving and nurturing them. Imagine how much work that was. Next. We're told that he built a wall and then cut a wine press and built a tower. Again, hard to imagine how much work he did. Then he let the vineyard out to some tenants and went away. Now comes the strange part of the story. When the time comes for that master to get his share of the fruit, he sends some of his servants to get that fruit for them. What would you expect to happen? Of course, you would expect those tenants to give him his fair share, the first fruits, you might say. But they don't. Listen closely to what they do. They actually beat one of the servants, they stone another one, and they kill a third one. Just stop and let that sink in. How horrible. Now ask yourself, if you were that master, what would you do next? Would you go to that vineyard and wipe them out? Probably you would, and maybe that's the same thought that I have. So it's incredible. This master gives them another chance. He sends other servants, in fact, more this time, and we discover they treat them exactly the way they had those first servants. Again, what would you do? Would you go and wipe them out finally? Well, this master doesn't do this. Incredibly, he gives them one more chance and sends his own son, thinking surely they will respect, surely they will honor my son. But those tenants see the son coming, and there they're thinking a bit of mine, mine, mine. If we kill him, this inheritance could be ours, and they throw him out of the vineyard, and they kill him. At this point, Jesus turns to the Pharisees and to the chief priests and elders and says, what will that master do now? They are indignant. They say he will cast those wretches out and give them a miserable death. Strange what Jesus does next. He quotes from Psalm 118. In fact, what he's doing is putting himself in the story. He is the son. Listen closely. The stone 
that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. It turns out that these religious leaders are the ones that Jesus is talking to and talking about. But clearly, Jesus' message does not make an impact on their lives. If we look closely, here's what they discover. They perceive that Jesus is talking about them. And so what do they do? They go out to plot against Jesus. My friends, clearly, Jesus today is talking to those leaders, but he's also talking to you and me, because we can also find ourselves in the story. Let's start here. Think about what that master did for those tenants. He gave them everything. That's what our master, our God, our Savior does for us. He gives us everything. He gives us everything, Luther says, to support this body and life. He gives us, you might say, a vineyard that is a place to dwell. He gives us the ability to work. He gives us the fruitfulness of our beautiful earth. But here's the question. With all the things he gives us, do we remember his call to share that with others? Do we remember his call to make a difference in the work of the kingdom on this earth? Or when he asks us to share, is there a small voice inside of us that says, mine? Now, it goes a bit deeper than that. What these tenants are doing about the master's property is a word we find in the commandments. They are coveting, coveting to want something badly. We all know what that feels like. A good pastor friend of mine has a great definition of covet. He says to covet is to want something so badly that you might be willing to do something wrong to get it. Isn't that exactly what these tenants do with that vineyard? My friends, deep inside of us, there continues to be the longing for more. Maybe for more things, or more shinier, brighter things, or maybe more power, or so many other things. Maybe it's even hard for us to put in words what we covet. But ask yourself honestly, the things that you covet, do they little by little take over your life where you might even be willing to consider doing something wrong to get them? It also works its way into spiritual matters. One of the greatest gifts that God ever gave us was the Bible, the Word of God. To see His love, to see His work, to hear His promises that we are still waiting for today. But sometimes we read the Bible in a different way. Not so much thinking that the whole thing is the inspired, authoritative word of God, but rather we read the Bible with a bit of mine, mine, mine in us. I want to read the parts I like. I want to read the parts that allow me to sort of live the way that I want to live. I think there's one more thing that Jesus is warning us about here. You could almost miss it. Verse 46. Why do those religious leaders, Pharisees, scribes, why do they do what they do? Because they are afraid of the crowds. My friends, if you'll pardon this saying, fear can be a very frightening thing. Now let's be clear. Fear can also be a good thing. Often it can keep us from being harmed. But the danger comes when suddenly we realize what is motivating our actions, our attitudes, maybe the words that we speak, coming from the fear that is inside of us that is never a good place to begin because it will allow us to justify things we might never do otherwise. Still, the most frightening thing in this passage is found when Jesus quotes from Psalm 118. He says that the cornerstone, the one, the stone that was rejected, has become the cornerstone, and those that fall on that stone or will be crushed on that stone. To put it another way, if we do not hear his words, if we do not listen to his warning in our lives, there's a danger that we will stumble and fall and be crushed under the requirements he has for us. But I want you to see the heart of Jesus. 
Ask yourself for a moment, why does Jesus tell them this parable about the vineyard? Is he telling them this parable because he wants them to know that he knows what they are planning, that is to have him arrested and taken off to death? Is he telling them this parable because he wants them to be condemned? Or is it actually a picture of the heart of God? Remember, he's going to die and die very soon. The time is short. And he calls out to those religious leaders one last time the possibility of repentance, the possibility of honoring, of respecting the Son of God, the possibility of forgiveness and salvation. Sadly, though, Jesus' words have no impact on their life at all except to make them angry and afraid, and they go off to plot against him. Another question for us today is this one. Why doesn't Jesus stop them? He could. Why doesn't Jesus stop them in their plotting? Because the truth is, it is not their plan. It's actually the plan of our Father in heaven. He sent his Son to give us salvation. This is the plan. Jesus is the stone that is rejected. In Jerusalem, he will be rejected by the very people that he came to save. He will travel in our place on a cross. And there on that cross, this stone, this cornerstone, will be the one that stumbles, is broken, and is crushed all the way into death. Still, Psalm 118 gives us incredible hope at just such a moment. The stone the rejected, the builders have rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord, and it is marvelous in our sight. What could be more marvelous then some women, and then the disciples traveling out early on Easter morning to make the incredible discovery that Jesus was no longer there. What could be more marvelous than Jesus appearing in the fear of the upper room that night and speaking words that we all want to hear every day, peace be with you. Do not be afraid. What could be more marvelous than all the other times that Jesus appears to his disciples? One of my favorites is the day they come close to the seashore and they find Jesus there preparing a breakfast on the beach for them. Jesus Christ, his death, and his resurrection is what makes it possible now for him to give us the incredible gift, the gift of forgiveness that we cannot earn on our own. He gives it to us completely. The gift of eternal life that we cannot earn on our own. He gives it to us completely. And he gives us the gift of being able to honor him in our real, everyday lives. Now what does that look like? As is so often the case, we can talk about many different things, but here's just a few. We honor the Son when we stop and look around at all the things that he has given us because he really does everything for us and gives us everything. As we spend time looking at all the things he's given us, my prayer is that it will prompt us to pray, to offer prayers of thanksgiving. And the more we see what God has done for us, the more we will see the love that he showers really and truly into our lives every day. Next, to look closely at our lives and to hear Jesus call that we are blessed to be a blessing. He gives us so many things. I want to ask you to talk to God in prayer this week about what that looks like in your life. Lord, help me to see those places where maybe I've been saying mine instead of saying yours. And as we do that, Lord, help me to see other ways that together we can make a difference in this world for you. Another way that we do this, my friends, is in our honest prayers. Because every one of us does have the problem of fear in our lives. As I said, fear can be a good thing, but it can also be a very bad thing for us. Talk to God about all those things that make you afraid. And then ask him to work in those things, to show you his light in the midst of the darkness that sometimes comes into our lives. 
One more thing I think that we can do every day to honor the Son. He says here in this passage, listen to this parable, hear this parable. It sounds a little bit like the words he said so many times, let those who have ears hear. My friends, that's all of us. I want to encourage you again this week and every day to spend some time in the scriptures. Hear the voice of Jesus. I want to give you a little reading assignment if I can this week. Before I tell you what the passages are, I want to tell you my purpose. I want you to read them and see how much they probably remind you of what happened here in Matthew chapter 21. Start please in the book of 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel chapter 11, the whole chapter, and then chapter 12, verses 1 to 15. Here it comes again. 2 Samuel chapter 11, the whole chapter, and chapter 12, verses 1 to 15. Then, when you're done reading that part of 2 Samuel, turn again to the Psalms and read Psalm 51. If you've been a Lutheran for a while, as you read that psalm, it's going to sound so familiar. In fact, it might even prompt you to sing along. If that happens to you as you read, let me know this week. I'd love to hear that. The most amazing thing to me in this passage today is the incredible thing the Master does, sending His Son. He has sent His Son to give us new life, and He is sending His Son again one day soon. In the name of the Son, we honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please stand as we join now together confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We go to God in prayer now. During our time of prayer, we'll also have a time of silence where you can raise the prayers of your own hearts and minds. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Merciful Lord, you have planted us as your own vineyard, that we might bear good fruit for your glory. Grant to us grace that we may be faithful and show forth in our lives the good works that glorify you and serve your purpose. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, embolden us by your spirit that we may give witness to your mighty acts. Bless all congregations, all pastors and all the missionaries who bring the gospel to people who have not heard. Give us ears willing to hear, minds willing to be instructed, and hearts willing to trust you in all things. We pray for our mission partners in the U.S. and all around the world. We pray for the pastors and people of St. Luke's Lutheran Church, Oviedo, Florida, Ascension Lutheran Church, Castleberry, Florida, Marco Lutheran Church, Marco Island, Florida, and the Sloka Lutheran Church, Sloka, Latvia. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mighty Lord, give to the nations both the desire for and the blessing of peace. Stop the actions of terrorists and those who would oppress with the power of fear. Spare us from disease, we pray. We pray for those whose lives continue to be impacted by the coronavirus. Today we remember Kamala, Hannah and her parents, husband and daughter, who are all being treated for corona this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love, deliver the sick from their illnesses, give relief to the suffering, help the troubled to know peace of mind, and be with the grieving and those in their final days. 
guide all healthcare professionals to serve those in need and give patience to those who must bear sickness and pain. Hear us especially today as we pray for Sunanda, Myra, Barbara, Diane, Melissa, Lou, Alexandra, Emmy, Marie, Sheila, Johan, Glenn and Elaine and their family, Andreas and his family, Martha, Gail, Marcus and his family, Suze, Harold, for Sunanda and her Sukara and her unborn baby, for Barbara and for her family that is caring for her, and for those we now name before you in our own hearts and minds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Blessed Lord, thank you for all that you give us, so many reasons to give you our thanks and praise. We join in giving thanks for Zenobia's uncle, that Zubin, that Hannah, and Hazen are all recovering from corona, or are corona-free now. We thank you for the safe journey home to India for Johanna and Winston. We thank you that Satish is celebrating another year of life this day. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, prepare our hearts to receive the Lord's body and blood in this holy supper, that we be strengthened in faith, renewed in love, and nurtured in faith by our communion. Give us unity of faith and harmony in our life together. Bring us at last with the saints who have gone before, that we may attain everlasting life and dwell in your presence forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, give us a willing spirit that we may serve you with all that we have and all that we are. Help us to be faithful and, and fruitful in the good godly use of the resources and gifts that we may use and share them in our tithes and offerings for your glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear us, O Lord, and give answer to our prayers, the prayers of your people. Pray in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, whom with the Father and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord forevermore. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We take a moment now to share the peace of the Lord with each other with a smile and a wave. Please do that at home. And if you're at home, go ahead and give a hug to one another. Peace of the Lord. On this day when we talk so much about all that God gives us every day, I'd like to encourage you to stop and think about that for a moment as we do our offering reflection. As you're continuing to remain at home, we certainly respect and understand that. We'd like to ask you please though to consider taking advantage of online forms of giving so we can continue to do the work of the Lord here in the kingdom, here locally and all around the world. Information available at the end of this video or in your bulletin on the front page of our website where you can find information about electronic giving. We take a moment now to think of all the things God has given us and this now has become, kind of become our pattern. Please think of something specific and share that with someone during the course of this week. Please pray with me. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us, that we may be a blessing to others. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. We now sing our final hymn, Christ is our cornerstone.
now have our dismissal. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Have a most blessed week in the Lord. Thank you.